They cry and resist. For them, treatment is especially invasive, painful, prolonged. The repeated venipuncture they must undergo to prolong their lives can become a recurring nightmare. Often they must be restrained by their parents and nurses during routine venipuncture or when starting IVs. She really had to be held down and, and, and somewhat restrained um, you know, during the time that I had gone in order to, to receive the therapy. I always had her on my lap and I would try to restrain her body with my body and one arm and hold her one arm with my hand. The parents undergo a great deal of stress as well. I cried. <laughs> I did. A lot of times I had to leave out the room and somebody else was there, you know, family or stuff like that. You know, I had to leave because I couldn't sit there and go through all that. Well, as she got older and knew more of what was going on, she would start to anticipate. And she also became more stubborn about going. Very frequently, parents talk about their children beginning to shut down even the day before, certainly the night before a treatment day. The child finds out they're coming in the next day. They stop talking, they stop eating, they stop smiling. They ask repetitive questions about what's going to happen to them and become very anxious. You would be mostly upset or you might just jump at anything, you know, not really meaning to get mad at another person, but I was just on the edge all the time. <laughs> The parents often can almost not hold themselves back from just lifting their children up out of the chair and just leaving the IV room and just trying to get away from the whole thing. And um, they really know that their children have to go th undergo the treatments, but it's, they're, they're really torn between helping their children, um, receiving the medication, and, and really trying to prevent their suffering. or trying to lessen the suffering a little bit. The child is really signaling to others to protect them, uh, is really trying to get the parent to, to take it away, to make it better. What makes this unique, though, is that the parents don't know really what to do here to comfort their children. I still felt the most, I felt very frustrated that I couldn't do anything. I wanted to get more involved. I wanted to do something that would help her. Performing these procedures is also highly stressful for IV nurses. Many pediatric IV units have nurse turnover rates as high as 50 percent. Anger, huffing and puffing, physical restraint, the child's legs in between the parent's legs being squeezed so that they won't run away. Um, somebody restraining the arm not in use and a nurse restraining the arm in use, then an IV nurse at the end of that arm doing the procedure. But it's very, very stressful. If you take my blood pressure, sometimes it'll be higher than the child's. And it's very difficult because you know you have to perform something painful on them. So you, you, know, you hold them down, which makes you feel like you're being cruel. And that just rips your heart out because you, know, you really care for these kids. Behavioral techniques are now being developed to lessen stress significantly during pediatric venipunctures. Simple and reliable, these non-invasive behavioral techniques can be learned by nurses and incorporated into treatment protocols. With a lot of these kinds of procedures, when the stimuli are the same and there's the same environment, oftentimes the same nurse, always the same room, that it's it's particularly easy for the child to learn that those are the cues that are going to set off this whole chain of aversive and painful events. Much of the stress that occurs during treatment is the result of a dynamic between child, parent, and nurse. Well, the children are very quick to challenge the nurse's expertise and ability, and the parents often chime in in support of their child against the nurse. So the nurse is liable to be confronted by a mother who doesn't trust her ability to perform the procedure and the child who is reacting to that distrust and being even more frightened. One technique derived from behavioral psychology is very effective, distraction. Cognitive distraction, getting your mind off of, off of the situation, is a very effective way of controlling symptom, whether that be anxiety, pain, nausea, vomiting. 
the behavioral symptoms of treatment. So in the work with the venipuncture, I felt that if we could get the child engaged in some other activity that would take his attention off of the needle stick, then we could get symptom control. By working together, the parent and the nurse can learn to use distraction before and during the procedure. A party blower is proven to be highly effective. So the party blower just came into my head. So it had to have really three components. The child would like it and do it. The parent could do it, and it was inexpensive, and it helped promote relaxation. So tell me about what we do to make this easier. Ooh, we forgot the flower. In the treatment room, the IV nurse coaches the parent and child in use of the party blower as a means of distracting the child. Because the parent is engaged, the parent is more relaxed, which helps relax the child. Because the nurse and parent are working together to engage the child, there is less potential for nurse-parent conflict. The parent is more relaxed and becomes an active, positive participant in the process, while the nurse is free to go ahead with the procedure. Uh, with the party blower, from my end of it, it gave, it gave me something to do. It made me feel a little bit more useful. Not just that I was bringing her in and she's sitting on my lap, but that I could actually help her and become involved. And that helped relax me, that I now had a job to do. One, two, Using the blower incorporates deep breathing technique into the procedure, which also promotes relaxation. The child is told to breathe slowly into the blower. The child cannot cry and blow into the party blower at the same time, thus reducing the stressful behavior. The results were dramatic. And I saw immediately the benefit. It helps the stress, it helps everybody. It makes, it makes a terrible thing better. So that helps you in that um, hopefully if the child is distracted enough, you can perform the procedure without him being so um, focused on what you're doing at his hand. So it, it's really a help. For distraction to be most effective, it must be accompanied by reinforcement. A simple system of rewards for the child is necessary. Stickers or other treats can be used to reward the child for being still and cooperating with the nurse. In learning theory, a behavior that you want to see more likely to occur, you want to reinforce a reward to make it more likely to occur the next time. With the party blower technique, it was very simple. You hold your hand still, you get one sticker, you blow, you do your breathing, and use your party blower, and you get another sticker. However, as effective as distraction and reinforcement can be, children still often have a tendency to attempt to delay the procedure. I'd say, come on, let's go get it over with. And that's when she would start in. She'd have to go get her security blanket. Uh, she would just say out and out no. She would just start acting up a little bit, head for the opposite end of the room. And um, I would most times have to go physically pick her up and carry her in. What happens there is, as the child stalls, the child's anxiety gets higher and higher and higher. As the anxiety gets higher, they become more resistant, they're hyperventilating, it takes more control from the nurse and the family to hold the child still to get the procedure done. What also happens in this is an escalation of the anxiety of the staff, the nurse, the physician, the parent. This all just gets the situation out of control. Limit setting is a means of structuring the actual invasive procedure to reduce undesirable behaviors. The nurse negotiates with the child to determine a specific time for the procedure to begin. At that time, the procedure begins immediately, even if the child has to be held down. This kind of limit setting is very effective. The first time we do it, it seems a little unnatural. It seems a little forced or perhaps even coercive. But the second time, the child knows that this is a predictable experience, that when you go in there, even if you're out of control, that the nurse and your mom will take charge and that you know when you need to get ready, the procedure will be done. The parent or the nurse needs to provide that structure for the child, and the child looks to the parent or the nurse for that kind of 
support, and I think support is what limit setting um, provides. Using distraction, reinforcement, and limit setting, child, parent, and nurse anxiety can be significantly reduced. Distraction. The nurse and parent instruct and coach the child in the use of the party blower before and during the procedure. The child breathes deeply into the blower, while the parent encourages this behavior during the procedure. Reinforcement. Rewards, stickers, or treats are given to the child following successful completion of the procedure or improved good behavior during the procedure. Limit setting. If the child attempts to delay the procedure, the nurse and parent institute limit setting. The nurse negotiates with the child on a time for the procedure to begin. When that time is reached, the procedure begins. Well, we've had parents be absolutely astounded and delighted that their child has gone from one day needing to be held down by two nurses and screaming and kicking to the next day feeling a sense of mastery over the fear of the procedure and doing the party blower uh, routine with the mother and feeling like a team with the parent. Michelle herself was very surprised the first time when it was all over. She just got a big grin on her face and started laughing and said she did it. She was so happy for herself that she was able to do it and not get all upset and hysterical about it, that she could keep her hands still and the IV went in and it didn't hurt. These behavioral techniques can also be adapted for use during many other kinds of painful procedures. They also can be helpful in a home setting for drug therapy. If a child or adult's attention can be engaged in some activity, cognitive or physical, that that will help reduce the symptom. The better the person is engaged, the more engaged they are, the better the symptom control. We found that those children who receive the intervention exhibit significantly fewer distress behaviors than the kids who don't receive the intervention, that the parents are less anxious, and that the children tend to report themselves less pain than children who don't receive the intervention. Using these techniques, procedures take less time to complete. All participants are less anxious. Children and parents become willing participants in the process. Nurses can learn these techniques quickly and coach parents to be able to use them. The result is less stress for all concerned. Nurses, however, must be flexible in their approach. Some children will respond to the blowers. For others, stress will be so high they require limit setting. Nevertheless, a combination of these techniques will help relieve the anxiety, allow parents to assist in their children's care, and make procedures more efficient and safer for all concerned.